Hey guys, how are we doing? Um, Coach T here, and I kind of wanted to do a video, we're gonna do a couple of them, on the 3D printer that the library has. Um, one, just because a lot of people might not actually know what a 3D printer is, what it does, how it can be properly used. Um, on the other hand, I also wanna get rid of some of the, the stigma that comes with it. So, 3D printers are just like any of the printers. You take a file, and then the printer makes it a reality. Um, in the stance of the printers that you guys would normally use at the library or in your home, you have a picture, you print it, it goes on a paper. Awesome. Um, as a 3D printer, what you do is you take a 3D file. Um, say, for example, you have a file that a program has been designed like this bottle cap, all right? A 3D printer then will layer it one layer at a time and work its way up until it prints you a bottle cap of that exact replica of that file. Now, um, this is gonna be a little bit more of uh, the, the science and the logistical part behind the printer um, of how it works. Um, say you're making a chess piece, okay? Um, something like a pawn. Uh, what's great about our printer is it actually has two nozzles. So something small enough like a pawn, you can actually print two pawns at once. Um, on the they're not made to be super sturdy, right? Pawns, they're game pieces. They're going to move. It's fine. So you can you can print what's called basically hollow with low infill. So as this cap, there's nothing on the inside and it will stand up by itself, okay? Now, the higher the infill, it basically what it does is it prints inside, okay? So you could have your pawn be completely hollow. You can have it 30% of the space filled, um, to add a little bit of structure, you could have 100% and then it would be a solid piece of uh, plastic. Now, how that would affect and the choices that you would want is, one, it would become more expensive. Every print is going to be cost by how much it weighs, um, for one. Uh, two, how strong the structure is, obviously. So we, when we print, say, figurines for like Dungeons and Dragons or Starfinder, um, they're very, very, very small. Um, and when you print them hollow, it makes their, their limbs, because they're people and structures, so if he's holding out his arm and this is all hollow, it makes it weak, so then it begins to snag and then uh, break. Um, so it just kind of matters what, what you're printing, um, and I'm more than happy to give advice on that too as you guys get there. The other thing is print speed. A figurine that's something highly detailed may take four to five hours to print a single figurine, um, but if you were just wanting to print a, a cube or uh, a missing token or a poker chip, that may take you 25 minutes, you know, at most. It just kind of matters in the material, um, the infill too, because if you're having a solid object, it's going to take a lot longer to print than a hollow object, obviously. So um, the other thing, sprint, print speed effects is the detail. Um, I, back to the pond or like the bottle cap. Not a lot of detail. You can go pretty fast and you're going to see some of the layers in between. Um, on the figurines or something, you're like, I need it to be perfect. I don't care how long it takes. I don't care how much material it takes. Then you're going to want to slow down the print speed. And what that's going to allow it to do is it's going to become more uniform layer to layer. All right. It, it basically, it's, it's not going to be as rushed looking. Um, it's going to look a little bit more finished, a little bit more of a polished product. Um, some of the other things, too, are like the scale size. Um, in the next video where I talk about like the websites and the places you can go to send me files and files to find, um, is our print area, um, a good way to think is it's about, it's about the size of my hand, all right? So you're, you're not going to be able to print anything you want, or you can, and there's buttons that can scale it down. So... So, sorry about that. I had to pause it. Um, somebody was knocking at the front door. So, what I'm talking about size is if you have something big, like a, a very large flower vase and it can't fit on our printing platform, what we can do is scale it down to 80%, 70%, 60% of its size. Um, what usually that means is the smaller, it's going to be a little bit, it's, it's easier to put higher levels of detail on a smaller print. Okay? Now, that's just because of the time and how this printer works. If you wanted to print something as large as, say, uh, a water bottle or a soda can, and 
the very smooth, very simple design, easy. Um, now, if you wanted to make a replica of the Statue of Liberty, it will take less time the smaller it is, but if you wanna see every crease, every wrinkle, every fold in the fabric, then you're gonna to wanna to make it a little bigger. And that just, again, it kind of limits to our specifications of our 3D printer. Um, we have several different colors. So you guys can email and say, I'd love this in purple, blue, orange, whatever. Um, our filament is an is in APA, so it is a, organic cornstarch based filament plastic okay um you can use all kinds of wonderful um basically crafting paints uh, any kind of modeling paint on it um, to give it you know detail bring it to life or if you guys just want it printed in a single color because that's all you're going to use it for is a coaster or a glass or like i said a poker chip you know you're trying to replace you know a blue poker chip that you lost or a checkers piece or however that may be um yeah so that's about it on the actual like specifications and some of the more technical aspects of it. Um, I myself am not a, a drafter, right? I don't have degrees or a background in computer-aided drafting. Um, so when you guys, it's very hard and not very realistic. So if you come up to me and say, I have this broken piece that is from a clock or a watch, or I need to replace this tool bit or awesome. Can the printer do that? Yes. However, we need a file, kind of like a picture that you would bring in to print off in the printer or a document. We need a file that you can email or bring in and then we will be able to print it off. Um, so in the next video, I'm gonna kind of talk about where you can find those files. Um, free, they're all over the place. All you gotta do is download them and you can email them and it's super easy. You can say, I'd like it about this size. This is what I'm thinking. Um, and I'd like it with, you know, I care about the detail a lot. I don't care about the detail a lot. I, it's super important what size this is. You know, you can give us your specifications and colors and all that kind of fun stuff, and we'll see what we can do for you. So hope that helps bring into the reality of what the 3D printer can do for us. Um, yeah, and then the follow-up video, like I said, will kind of give you an idea where you can start looking for files. So, all right, hope everybody having a good day.